Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Strip by Sia, your podcast for strippers, sex workers, and all the fancy naked people in between. My name is Steph Sia. I am a sugar baby, or was a sugar baby. I am currently a stripper based here in Vancouver, Canada, and I'm also a digital content creator. My apologies, I just woke up an hour ago, so <laughs> I still got morning voice right now, so I'm really using this podcast to warm me up but (laughs) a little bit about the show we um I have started the show about two years ago now almost yeah almost two years anniversary already where I interview uh different sex workers strippers anyone to do with the sex industry uh, to really gain a holistic perspective on our community the issues and challenges that we may be facing and kind of where it's going what the future looks like so i have these really cool kind of candid conversations with people that i handpick from the industry um again to just really get an, a big bigger picture kind of view on what's going on in our uh wonderful sex worker community so I have selected this guest who I actually had notes on bringing on to the show ages ago since like season two and I'm like why is it taking me so long to reach out to this person and then I was like okay I'm just gonna go ahead and slide into the DMs which I did and this person finally said yes so I am really 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 stoked to bring on dancer based in portland oregon miami lux onto the show today miami are you there thank you for having me oh there you go there you are (laughs) you're so welcome thank you so much for taking time every day i know you just finished grocery shopping it's also morning where you are as well but how are you how are you doing i think you were working all weekend hello (laughs) welcome to the show yeah, I was dancing this weekend. I actually took a break this weekend because, uh, you know, the things that happens to dancers when you're not there mentally, you're mm-hmm. not really going to be able to work, right? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, so I, I took the weekend off. I did work, like, one day, and then I left home a little early even that day, but I'll be working all this week. There you go. <laughs> Always getting back to the grind. <laughs> Breaks never take too long, so. <laughs> but Miami Lux, you are a a male presenting stripper based in Portland, Oregon. You're also of Latinx background as well. I actually don't know much too much about you except you're a phenomenal dancer from what I've seen on Instagram. I've been creeping you for a little while now, for like half a year. So <laughs> tell the audience if you'd like. Uh, who you are and, and what it is that you do in terms of sex work and go. So, I'm mainly an NB stripper performer. Mm-hmm. Um, I am a traveling dancer right now. I'm currently in Portland. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> Portland just has a great community, so I do really enjoy being there. Um, in regards to the like, sex work community, the queer community, the BDSM community, mm-hmm. all of these communities you can think of are, are there. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty much just a, a dancer. I mean, I do other stuff as well, but I mean, I don't know if it's relevant to the podcast, but. Oh, please I mean, tell I, us. I, I drive trucks. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's how I balance dealing with a lot of people, you know? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. It's like two opposite jobs. That's a complete 180. I know. Oh my (laughs) gosh, my mind is like blown right now. Like, boom. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh my gosh, that's, and then that's a really incredibly physical job too. Cause those are long, long routes to go. And you're in solitude, you're by yourself hardly any pit stops oh my gosh i had no idea about this about you <laughs> yeah so i was doing that last year i actually took a, a year break from dancing and i started dancing again in like march oh, okay. of this year. yeah yeah wow and is that like like 
You said you were a traveling yeah. dancer too. I guess like you've been traveling all over the states as well, or whereabouts? So places that I've danced so far, I've danced in Florida. Mm -hmm. I've danced in BC. I've danced in New York. Mm -hmm. I've danced in Denver. Portland, obviously, I'm, I'm there now. <laughs> Where else? Oh, I think I did one time in Massachusetts, was it? Okay. Yeah, it was like a, a club in Massachusetts. I, I'm pretty sure it was Massachusetts, but I'd have to make sure. <laughs> um, wow, so you've, you've been around. You've had quite the amount of experience dancing all over the country. Amazing. I mean, yeah, I guess, I, I guess I probably do compared to like uh, a lot of so the, the like some of the differences with male dancing is that this is very new on this side. Like it, it's very like when people go out to male strip clubs, it's a it's very it's very shocking. It's like oh, oh my god, I've never like most people haven't done this. Mm -hmm. So I mostly run into new people that have never been into a male strip club. Interesting. So would you say that male strip clubs are more of a novelty? Or or how would you describe that? I'm not sure, but I'm not sure how to explain it exactly, but... Probably, like it, it's just, I don't know, pe people's, it, it's a very a new industry in the sense of like, it, it's, it's when people think strippers, they think female strippers yes. would be on the pole. Mm -hmm. And the male side of thing, like for you to get the equivalent of that, there's actually not many clubs. No. Considering that I found like, Pretty much, like a lot of cities have gigs. Mm -hmm. That if you if you know the industry, you know how to get them. But it's it, it's kind of like it, it's not allowed in a lot of places. Wow, it's, it's illegal. <laughs> really? Wow, yeah. that's so surprising to me. But also, like at the same time, you're also right because I don't hear very much about male strip clubs at all like we i'm based in vancouver canada so it's a little bit different here but we haven't and someone correct me if i'm wrong but i mean at least in the last like 50 years i don't think we've ever even had a solely male strip club we've, we've had um like ladies night for example or like specific events where male strippers are invited to the club or they're touring and there's like a special event surrounding that or like friday nights from this time to this time is going to be dedicated for male strippers but like they're and again if someone's listening and knows more history on this um but at least to my knowledge i am not really familiar with any male specific um strip clubs at all as you said it's like mostly female strippers and that's again something that just comes to mind when you think of strippers just like oh females mainly right so that's a really yeah. interesting observation really? yeah yeah um when it's kind of funny because when people think like like male stripper they tend to think like uh, what's that thing with the really cool dancer is it like um, magic mike yeah okay, yeah magic mike. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i've never totally. watched it because like i like cool like i have done gigs that were more like that you know choreographed dances or whatever mm -hmm. but i kind of just do more like what a female does like the stripper pole and yes i i sell dances sometimes too i make money on stage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like it's it's very simple like my clubs allow nudity sometimes so i could choose to go nude on stage if i want totally 
Okay, wait. Let <laughs> let let's back it up a little bit too, because how how did you even like get into stripping? How did you start stripping? Like, how did you? What was your introductory point to dancing? <laughs> Always joked about it. Oh yeah. Okay. Throughout like my younger, so I think I started dancing when I was. So when I was twenty five. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm 30 now. Um, Damn! Uh, I've been dancing yeah. a long time. <laughs> so, I actually started pole like three years ago. Okay, yeah. So, I'm kind of newish to pole. Mm-hmm. But getting into dancing, I just thought, like, I've always joked about it. You know, um, I just, I had a chef job in Miami and it was mm. pretty decent, but I was just like, I need to do something that's going to make enough money. Yeah. And, and I don't really like working for other, like I, I've always worked for like for the last like 10 years I've worked for myself. Totally. Um, one way or another, the closest thing to working for someone else was like a chef job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I reconsidered that position because, you know, for other reasons. But after I left that chef job, I was just like, cool, we're going to try being a stripper now. And wow. I had no clue what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone ever have a clue when they first start? <laughs> no. Yeah, like... But like, I did have, like, pretty great mentors, like, East Coast strippers, mm-hmm. and most of my style probably came off of them. Okay, um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about East Coast versus West Coast. Uh, like, stylistically. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, well, what were the differences? Because I'm a West Coast girl through and through, so I love to hear about what it's like on the other side of the country. Um, I haven't, so I haven't been to the full West Coast yet, so I don't know fully what it's like, Mm -hmm. like in the rest of the West Coast, but personally, I think people in this area, they, they might be a little more calm with their tone as where, you know, I don't know, I could be talking to one of my friends and we're just talking shit to each other and not Mm -hmm. taking it too seriously Mm -hmm. I think there's more throughout the east coast I feel like more people like I don't know what it like banter Mm. like they talk shit to each other yeah (laughs) you know something (laughs) like that and they're like playful about it totally well someone on this side would be offended Oh, okay. Okay, now I get it. Yeah. I don't know the other parts of the West Coast, if they're like that too, but... Yeah, it depends on who you're talking to, but yeah, sometimes we can be a little sensitive here. (laughs) (laughs) For sure, for sure. And I guess, like, and this is a dumb question, it's kind of a side tangent, but... Did you get your 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 stage name because you were dancing in Miami? That is that where you started, or? Oh no, I actually started in Virginia. Oh, okay. And I was in Virginia. Then I just started looking up things close, and I found like three gigs mm-hmm. because in order to get that's another thing, like you might be able to find like a club mm-hmm. now like a male club mm-hmm. whether it's like gay or for women the way that i see it is just like those gay clubs are the the way it it's kind of like when you go to a female strip club mm-hmm. in reality anybody could go in yeah yeah and that's the way that i feel like if you're gonna be a stripper you know like you're not meant to, like, I don't know, like, I'm not attracted to most 
people that come in, I don't think any dancer is really supposed to be. No. You know? <laughs> so it's like, at the end of the day, when I'm there, like, I'm fucking working. Yes. So I don't, I don't really care about gender or anything like that. Totally. <laughs> It shouldn't make a difference. We're here to make money. <laughs> yeah. You know? Wow. Yeah. No, I hear that. I hear that for sure. Like, there shouldn't really be any differences or separation, in my opinion. I also kind of agree with that as well. But, like, when you're doing your initial research, and because you have dance from, like, city to city across the country, is it hard to find employment um, going from gig to gig, being a male dancer, or how like so, how does that work for you? There's it depends on the city, right? Um, because it it's it's a lot of things. Have, have you ever been to a female strip club and you're auditioning and you're like feeling out the club? You're like, mm, mm-hmm. I don't know, I don't really like this one. And yeah, then you go somewhere else. Yeah, it's the same kind I, of vibe. I can't do that. Mm, okay. <laughs> well, I, I do, but I have to leave to another city. Oh, sometime. damn. <laughs> yeah. Damn. So, okay. It's not even just like, okay, I'll go to another club. Like, nah, I'm really not feeling it here <laughs> in general. <laughs> <laughs> because there's usually only like a very few options per city. Yeah, totally. And I don't necessarily... Like, I make sure I know where I'm going. Like, I look up the clubs that I'm going to go to, and I, like, reach out, and I talk mm-hmm. to them, and then, you know, I'll, I'll plan to go dance it. Right. But there was one time, I think, when I was really young, like, like I don't know, within, like, a few first months doing it, oh I did God. a trip to New York, yeah. and I danced in a place that I shall not disclose of. <laughs> but I was just like, oh, yeah, I'm not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> this is not, I'm, I don't know. Is it more like the vibe overall or is it more you feel unsafe and uncomfortable? You feel unsafe and uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And the vibe wasn't also. I mean, I did meet some cool people there. Mm-hmm. Um, however, the interactions in that club um, between customers and dancers, I wasn't having it. Oh yeah, are you? W- would you be willing to elaborate on that? Like, what do you mean by that? It's a very gross, fast-paced business. Okay. Like attitude so people go in there expecting you to do so much for so little oh gotcha gotcha and yeah it it was kind of like it's pretty much that i don't deal with that i charge more yeah (laughs) (laughs) i don't hide it it works yeah (laughs) Well, thank you for sharing that bit too, because like, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about safety in clubs too, um, m- much later on in the show too. But like, this is something that happens to us a lot as strippers. Like, it was my first week back, uh, actually at the club at the time of recording, like last week, and I forgot how many times I, I get asked, like, "Oh, what are you doing after?" are you available for sex? (laughs) Are you available for full service? I'm like, I am a stripper and there's nothing wrong with that, but that's not something that I offer. And that's why we have escorts. So you can definitely Google that (laughs) and find, (laughs) find that, you know, like, I mean, and I'm sure you get that a lot too, but like, it's, it's so frustrating sometimes because it's just like, I'm just trying to make a buck here. Come on. (laughs) But, um, yeah, you, sorry, continue, continue. No, no, you're talking. 
I wanted to ask, like, going back in terms of, like, your process and, and like, you know, reaching out to the clubs beforehand before you actually, like, go and move uh, to that city or if you, before you go and go work that gig. Do you ever get any pushback at all from people um, in terms of, like, no, that's not what they're looking for or, like, just rejection in general? From the clubs? Yeah. But that same club in, in, in New York actually gave me snarky remarks. I mean, I oh. didn't work there. But they're just like, eh, I don't know. I don't know if people really like long hair. <laughs> <laughs> or like, you know, it was like, like, he was like, like, yeah, you're attractive, but I don't know. People do kind of know about long hair. Or like, oh, gosh. <laughs> I was just like, I was like, I just told them I was like, that was like, it works for me. Yeah. And that's all that matters. I don't know what to tell you. (laughs) Well, it's true. Like, strip clubs can be really discriminatory in certain ways when it comes to your looks. Like, they sometimes want you to adhere to a certain dress code or they don't like tattooed people or they don't like X, Y, and Z, right? And... I find that really annoying because I feel like there's always going to be someone that appeals to everyone, you know, and it's, in my opinion, it's good to have more diversity rather than just having a club full of blondes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, (laughs) In regards to that, I'm going to throw in one of the differences. Oh, please. The female and the male strip clubs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Go ahead. At least the queer clubs are more... There's a lot of different variety of dancers. Mm -hmm. um, And they do a lot of other things. Not all of them are pole dancers either. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of room, especially like in the queer clubs, there's more room for, you know... Swings, bears, <laughs> you know, like yes. friends, women, yes, fans. Mm-hmm. I mean, pretty sure the list is huge. The list can go <laughs> but, on and on. <laughs> um, yeah, there's more. To, I feel like I feel it's consistently like that in queer clubs throughout the the U.S. At least I can. In regards to body type, in regards to racial diversity, that mm. depends on where you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to touch on a little bit about that, too? Because I'd love to hear about, I'd love to hear about that perspective. Right now, I'm one of the only Latinx dancers that I know of. Mm. And mm-hmm. in the clubs around here there's a Mm -hmm. few others but if i could think about it and like just almost count it on my hand oh (laughs) (laughs) oh my god Uh, uh, miami is very diverse yes um compared to a lot of places and when i come here um it's, it's it's the other way around. Yeah, for sure. I, I wanted to bring that up too. I'm so glad that we already like kind of naturally fell into this topic. But I love Portland. I used to go port- to Portland quite often when the borders were still open, and I was actually supposed to do like a Portland um, mini series because I had like all these interviews lined up with different strippers in Portland last year. But obviously, with the pandemic, that like didn't happen. But I just remember Portland, although it being really progressive in many different ways, I also found it to be like really predominantly white. And I wanted to hear about your experiences as a Latinx and how you navigate those spaces. And like, do you feel comfortable at all or do you feel safe at all? Like, Even when it comes down to like something as simple as food, 
do you feel that's inclusive in that way or what are your opinions it's all opinions on this so <laughs> uh, in regards to food that we have in the area or just in general when it comes to your heritage uh, and being in a predominantly white state yeah yeah i get a lot of dumbass comments <laughs> <laughs> oh i'm sure you do I just, I, I do it, it's a, a lot of a lot of it is passive a lot of it is very passive. Okay. Like, it's not intended on being rude, but I think there was one time I was in a grocery store, and I was with my other friend, um, and we were just talking in, like, a, a coffee shop or something, and there was just there's just this dude looking at me, older white guy. Okay. Um, and just kind of like eyeballing me for like five minutes and then he finally says something um pretty much he comes up to me he's like wow you have really nice tattoos and i I just keep looking at my friend like why is this guy approaching me yeah Um, (laughs) and he was like i didn't know colored people to get colored tattoos. What? <laughs> and I was just like, God. it's not anything like, it's not something that like, would drive me crazy or like, super bad or anything. But no. in my head, I'm just like, man, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> when you try to drink my coffee, like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh gosh, like, I am sorry. Be- being a Canadian and hearing stories like this, I'm just like, I roll Americans. <laughs> and I, yeah, I have a lot of American vi- listeners. I don't want to offend anyone saying that, but it's just like, these comments, as you said, they're passive, but they're so, like, ignorant. Because that's what, that's what it is. Yeah. It's not... Um, they don't realize it. I, I feel like it's just a different culture, especially like if you want to compare it to something like Miami, mm-hmm. it's, it's completely different. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, and I lived in quite a few places, including overseas. I lived in England and Ireland for a bit. Oh, okay. And I've probably been to like 12 or 13 countries or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Quite a bit. Yeah. It's... But in regards to Portland and Miami, like, they're just so different. So... It's like going to another country <laughs> and then going to Idaho. <laughs> it's, like... <laughs> it's like night and day. Yeah, because like I could... I mean, my father doesn't speak English. Mm-hmm. Like, he understands, and he'll be able to talk shit to you in English if he needs to, if he realized, because he could still understand, he just doesn't speak it very well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so he, he might say, hey, motherfucker, fuck you. <laughs> you know, or something like that. But yeah, totally. He, he lives in Miami, he works in Miami, and like, you know, you know, speak English. Yeah, we we have. Like, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, it's it's just really like that, like really different. Really different, and like I can share yeah. something similar here in Vancouver. Like, I'm part Chinese, and there are a lot of areas in Vancouver or like the outskirts of of Vancouver or what we call the lower mainland that you know are predominantly Chinese like each neighborhood is going to have a different cultural hub and there's this one area in Richmond which is near the airport and it's predominantly Chinese and there's tons of businesses and small businesses and I don't speak the language but there's tons of businesses that like it's all in Chinese that they only speak Mandarin or Cantonese and they are getting along fine but at the same time they're also the butt of a lot of racism 
that has been happening over the past few years. I mean, along with COVID and all that stuff, too. But it's just, it makes it really hard (laughs) to, to hear stuff like that. Like, it makes me really angry. And going back to the conversation with sex work, but also with fetishization and racialization, do you ever... Well, not do you ever, but like, what are your experiences dealing with culturally insensitive people at, say, the strip clubs or the venues that you work at? I'm used to dealing with people. Mm-hmm. If, I'm, if I'm not mentally willing to deal with people saying, like, dumb things, mm-hmm. that's different. But the way that I handle them, is just kind of like I don't know. I hear I hear a lot of comments. Yeah. Like, yeah, some of them are worse than others. Um, some of them are blatantly racist. Yes, and it might not be towards me. It might be towards the, someone from another culture or some <laughs> other background. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's really frustrating. I, I expect people to be. Like, I know that it exists. Like, I'm not surprised. Yeah. By it. But, you know, I, if I, if someone says something racist, like, I'm not gonna completely demonize you, but I'm gonna roast you. Yeah. I'm gonna roast you nice. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, I think that this this one customer, I mean, I didn't really interact with him much, but he, he, he made a very nasty comment about a black dancer. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, something about jungles. Oh, no. Oh, God. Yeah. Jesus. And, and like, I... Immediately, I was just like, no, no, just stop. You, you sound stupid. Like, yeah. my brain sounds. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, like, um, in regards to, I, I'm this very unusual, like, people could tell, like, I'm not from here. My, mm-hmm. so what happened was over time, more and more people just, started calling me Miami. Okay. Um, when they didn't know my name, they called me a whole bunch of other things too, like Aquaman, and I, think <laughs> I heard Fabio too. I don't really like <laughs> that one. But... Yeah. <laughs> okay, and okay. I'm, not, I'm kind of neutral about Aquaman too. Like, <laughs> it's like, all right, go. <laughs> But they started calling me Miami, mm-hmm. and they pretty much, they're like, oh, you know, Miami, the dancer from Miami. Hey, Miami, what do you want to drink? It kind of started something like that. Gotcha. Or, and it's kind of also a stereotype. Yeah. Because they assume people of Miami have, like, the long, curly, black hair all the time, mm-hmm. and... Actually, males down there have short fades. Hey. Oh, yeah. So hey. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's definitely, I wouldn't say that's a Miami thing. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, like, it's, you kind of hit it on the head there, too. It's like feeding into that stereotype, but it's that, and as you said, it doesn't even really exist in Miami, but that's something that they have conjured up in their own head in terms of what they think people in Miami might look like. And I think for to me that's kind of problematic though. And it is like um what they don't realize is that people in Miami even just like I well, I'm, I'm Cuban and Puerto Rican. Mm-hmm. That's my background. Yes. But even even in Miami like you can't like, this is what I've learned about traveling. When I meet someone, I don't assume yes. whether I don't assume mm-hmm. what they like, 
I don't assume anything. I don't know this person yet. Yes. Because you should think in Miami we have people, just Cubans alone. I've seen Cubans that look in all different type of ways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, like if Miami has a lot of Cubans, people have like a certain image in their head and it's just like, no, it's, it's not. There's a lot of very different looking type of people down there. Yes. There is a lot of diverse, different looking people that can be from the same race. Like it's not this one um, this one image, we're not limited to that. And I hear you with that. And it's really frustrating because as an Asian woman, I'm Filipino Chinese born in Canada. I, and I've talked, I've touched about this on other episodes too, but the whole fetishization aspect and them and potential clients and not even clients, but like even people in the community just automatically assume I'm something like, for example, a person that I've been speaking to on Instagram who's also in the community um, sent me an image and she's like, and it was like some Asian writing of some sort, which actually was Japanese, but she's like, oh, um, I, I believe this is in Korean and can you tell me what it says? One, I'm not Korean. <laughs> and two, like, why would you assume that? Like, yes, my stage name is Kimchi, but like... <laughs> like it's a really wrongful assumption to be made and also a dangerous one and also a stupid one I will say that <laughs> and, and that's that's another thing um like just we we should really never assume someone's culture that's like a really good example of right? it. Like, that's so cringy it's, it's so cringy AF I'm just like couldn't I like got so mad and then I was like this is really offensive and please don't ever ever assume anyone's race don't talk to anyone like this like it's so rude and we get that a lot like as as strippers i mean i specifically do that do get that a lot um people always ask me where i'm from no where are you really from i'm like literally from canada but (laughs) They, they, when they want to know like what my background is and then they want to try to like relate to it like oh I used to date someone that was Filipino or I've been to the Philippines to try to make a connection I'm like there is no connection there you can't relate to me <laughs> that way <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah it's hella frustrating and uh, I just it's really annoying <laughs> to encounter at times and at the club it's it can be difficult to navigate like how do you how do you deal with clients like that or patrons or or how do you deflect I make fun of them (laughs) fair enough they deserve it (laughs) thing is like um I know a lot of the community mm-hmm. here, so that's also the difference. The difference between what I feel like the, the type of clubs that most, like a lot of females work at, like the female clubs, mm-hmm. compared to um, the, the male club, at least the queer ones. Mm-hmm. Um, my customers, the like the people that come in, my patrons, this, they're just the, the queer community. It's mm-hmm. like women, men, it, it, it's every gender. Yeah. Sometimes it's like more heavy on the, the guy side of it. Sometimes it's, it, so potentially being the other way, mm-hmm. depending on if there's like bachelorette parties or whatever. But. Oh, right. Yes. Yes. Bachelor yeah, parties. I'm certainly not a fan um, <laughs> of that, that crowd a lot of times. I don't think anyone really is. <laughs> um, uh, it's just... So, obviously that crowd, like, uh, as what I said before, that's already, that whole crowd has never been to a strip club. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they're in a group. 
Mm-hmm. A lot of times that they don't tend to tip, so I don't tend to chase that. Mm-hmm. Like when I'm at work, I'm working. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> and like what I I think the in regards to like my female patrons, mm-hmm. um, you asked earlier if they've ever requested the pay for sex and yeah. Um mm-hmm. but <laughs> moving on from that <laughs> that that is the answer though. It it's yes. I have yes. heard it from women too. Yes. Um, <laughs> which another question that I usually get is like Oh yeah, that must be fun. Like sometimes people think I'm a fucking juggalo or something. <laughs> yeah. and, and I'm just like I am nowhere near as sexual as I appear to be as a dancer. <laughs> you know, but I'm actually a lot more mellow. Yeah. You know. Totally. Totally. I know it's um I think it's like with that whole stereotype of the male dancer too is that they're so hyper sexualized they must be great in bed kind of notion i mean i might be if i'm in the mood (laughs) but if i'm not like i'm also not a person to like i don't really have to i don't know i don't have this huge necessity to like if i feel sexual then I'll be sexual mm-hmm. if I want but if I'm not into it like like I'm not gonna act no no yeah I think like people sometimes forget or tend to forget that it's a performance that we're doing on stage you know yeah <laughs> did you want yeah, to so touch on that <laughs> In regards to the female clientele, the biggest stage tippers are obviously the female dancers, Mm -hmm. um, which they do come in like frequently, I would say, and they they make it rain on stage. Yeah. And the I I find the with the the mid thirties women very independent at the point of their life where they probably, like, you know, had their, their serious relationships or marriages or whatever, and they mm-hmm. just, like, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. Yeah, the, those come in, too. Mm. Yeah, no, I hear that. Tell us about the other patrons that might visit. Um, I got a lot of trans humans. Okay. I really get a lot of um, everything because yeah. I also get, I would say like, yeah, you mean like in regards to the male side? Yeah. I pretty much, I pre- in regards to the type of people that are into me, hmm. <laughs> I, I really think all type of people. Yeah. I have, all type of people that like just, like support me and tip me and just that's amazing buy me buy me groceries like yeah. these groceries I did like like someone else did them for me love it I love that <laughs> yeah very grateful that's great I guess, like, the last topic I also want to touch on, too, and I think we kind of briefly, 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 briefly touched on it earlier, but I know that you want to talk about safety as well, I guess, as dancer or in general. I'd love to hear your perspective on that. So, the number one thing I think about safety, well, where I have to focus in the club because there's a lot of other shit, but <laughs> there's really like people be drugging, mm. like they be like dosing shit, and that is not fucking cool. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, I 
seen some shit. But when I was, like, when I first started dancing, I think it was, like, my fifth month, mm-hmm. I saw someone get drugged. Oh, my and gosh. And they, they, like, fell, and they had a seizure, and... Oh, my God. It, yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. Oh, um, dear. Yeah, he was in the locker room. Oh, and geez. I saw that, and I was just like, from that day forward, if I do not see that drink poured in front of me, mm-hmm. I will not drink it. Yeah, no kidding. I don't care who's giving it to me. Like, I just won't. And I'm pretty sure, like, I know exactly. I get a tequila on the rocks, mm-hmm. you know. I don't know. I guess it, it's like clear. I feel like mm-hmm. I know exactly what it tastes like. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. But that's definitely a big one. And obviously, the thing now uh, with personal information, in regards to personal information, there's a lot of things I won't share. For like, sure. My name. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I don't be giving around my address. Like, we ain't talking about my family and what they do all the time. And no. Yeah. <laughs> Some people uh, on my Instagram, I've there's been like very sketchy accounts oh. with very shady political views following me. Oh. Yeah. Oh no. It was like extreme right, and I'm just like. Oh god. <laughs> it's funny, <laughs> like they're following me. <laughs> You're like, you like, must be mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I don't know if they think I'm conservative or something, but. <laughs> they must be confused with another account. <laughs> no, they keep making different accounts, and they follow. Like, what? They follow people from like the clubs that I work. Oh, that's really scary. Yeah. That's <laughs> really scary. Yeah. And it's, oh shit. I think especially queer clubs um should put like a big focus on fucking security mm-hmm. and you know like just prevention. Mm-hmm. You know. Like, it's as simple as that. Like, yeah. You know, I've never been one to like, I'm, I don't go to people that I don't know. Or, you know, like when I go home, I go home, I, I go hang out with my friends or. Yeah. yeah, you make a really great point here. Because do you remember that, that shooting that was in Florida? Uh, where is it? Orlando? Yeah. Like a few years ago, like that was the targeted attack specifically on like lgbtq like que- the queer community it was a club it was a, it was a male strip club yep. I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure I'm not sure if it had dancers I'm not and sure I, either because like, there's a lot of like there's clubs that have go-go's mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I thought those was I think might be I thought they had go-go's but I'm not sure but it was a queer club. Yeah. That, that's that, that says enough. Like, what the yeah. fuck? Well, you what? Know, I yeah. Think queer clubs should, you know, like, they should up, up their security. Like, For sure. Yeah, because, like, well, one, not only that was that um, a queer club, but that was also, like, a lot of Latinx. Like, the community went there, too, like, frequently. So I feel like it was, like, a double attack. So, right? Like, so many layers there, right? So. Yeah, Orlando's pretty, Orlando's, like, a smaller Miami, maybe. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it's true. It's true. And, like, we need to think about this kind of stuff in terms of, like, protecting its patrons protecting its workers and i i don't know and i haven't really talked too much about security maybe i should do an episode on security in terms of like bouncers and stuff and how they're supposed to deal with with emergencies and stuff because you know sometimes people are targeted or communities are targeted 
um, unfairly and unjustly, and no one ever really talks about it until something has happened. So. So from what I from from what I know, I know that a lot of the queer clubs are actually really connected together. Oh, good. That's the most that I know. Okay. So yeah. if something happens in one club around here, like. Like other clubs around here, notified. yeah. Then they'll kind of be notified, or people within the community be like, "Hey, this happened," kind of thing. Yeah, like if, if there's like a shady person, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. like I, I've seen, I've witnessed it being done. Yeah, you know, so that's it's, it's a good that that's a good precaution, you totally. know, but. I don't know. It's, it's, it's just crazy to think about that. Like, damn. It is really crazy to think about that, too. And also, like, pulling more recent events, too, that's more sex worker related. But, like, the the Atlanta shootings, too. Like, that's... I mean, we're not talking about strip clubs there, but we're talking about uh, erotic massage parlors as well. And, again, that was another targeted attack by some incel. So, like... There, I feel I don't know how how to enforce more safety or enforce more security, um, but there definitely needs to be more acknowledgement on why these communities are being targeted and who's targeting these people and having like actual legitimate like sanctions put in place and proper punishment and consequences for those that commit these atrocious types of crimes right so anyways the- yeah, I, I just think there has to be more like just like I, I don't know I, it, like when someone does something like that you have to think the type of access that they have Mm-hmm. good point good point you know like and a lot of clubs have you know, it, it depends on the access, you know, and, and it's really not that hard to do. Just think about it. Well, if you were this person and you wanted to attack this club, how would you do it? <laughs> like, it's really not that hard. Yeah. But a lot of places, in order to not, like, they're trying not to spend money on security. Yeah. Or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then bad shit happens. That's bullshit because there is something there. I do feel like there is a trend and I don't specifically know the the exact data, Mm -hmm. but there is a lot of shit that happens in strip clubs. Yes. Yes, there is. And this is something I've I've been wanting to talk about. I mean, at least we're touching on it now, but do you know how many strippers are murdered and stalked or, or sorry, or just in general? How many sex workers are targeted and stalked and murdered? Like, a lot. And no one ever talks about it. Which is well, disturbing. I think, I think it's good that we talk about it now. Because, yeah. like, that's a fucking problem. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> the fact that we work in clubs, and this is what pisses me off about, like, a lot of these clubs are managed by people that have no idea about this industry. Yeah. Yes. They have no fucking clue. They're just judging it and be like, yeah, I manage this. I do the strip club thing. Yeah, I tell them what to do. They're replaceable. (laughs) Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the fucking mentality. And if I work somewhere and they think like that, I'll tell them to go fuck themselves. Yeah. I don't play that shit. Yeah. I... I don't know. Like, I, I already told like, I barely like working for anyone. Yes. And I'm a contractor. The closer mm-hmm. that it feels like a job, like, <laughs> run away. The faster I'm going to be out of there. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you in that for sure. Um, well, this has given me so much inspiration for future episodes because <laughs> I, I feel like we're both getting so fired up on it. But it also shows our passion, too, about this and also, you know, shedding light to 
what an important topic that this is and, and what's being missed. So thank you so much for, for, you know, for sharing your voice and your challenges, your experiences, um, working around the States. So it's a really, really cool to get to know you, but there are a couple questions here as well, which I think they might go fast because we already touched up on a couple of them, but <laughs> let's, right, let's sure. give it a spin. So you already kind of answered this question, but not sure if you want to add anything more to it, but do women ever ask him to pay for sex? All right, yeah. <laughs> I will add on to it. Um, yes. It doesn't happen as frequently as there, like, as men. Um, however, mm-hmm. it does happen. Mm-hmm. Or I have someone, but they're usually more, I feel women are usually more shy about everything. Women don't have, this is a very new thing for most women. Mm-hmm. So they're definitely usually a lot more shy about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> But for the most part, I'd say most of them don't ask for it, though. Nice and respectful. Oh, hopefully. But I have my own opinions about, like, some women in strip clubs. <laughs> so, in, in, in regards to the female um, patrons of mm-hmm. the club, in regards to sexual assault, like, Mm. I have been sexually assaulted by females as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, Can't believe we even talk about this. Yeah. Did you want to share a little bit about that if you're comfortable? Well, I think it's pretty obvious that, like, you know, being a sex worker, Mm -hmm. like, especially, like, being a stripper and just walking around, around a lot of people that are fucking drinking. Yeah. Like, Mm-hmm. What a lot of people think is like, ha ha ha, little squeeze. It's just like, no sexual assault. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, this, totally. No, like, no, and it it happens so much. Yes, that it seemed like a normal behavior. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's fucking crazy, but <laughs> women, for the most part, don't tend to do that that much. Okay. Um, like when I give a woman a lap dance, they're like, "Wow, I get all this just for this price." As <laughs> where the a male customer will be like, "Like, what do you mean I can't suck your dick for twenty dollars?" <laughs> 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 like, it's fucking crazy. Man. <laughs> We're just proud of the mouth, Oh, I uh, bet you have. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that was the very, like, like, I don't know if that was too out there, but... No, that's great. You're fine. Yeah. Um, <sighs> Part of the job, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah but Thanks. PSA, don't, uh, don't touch the dancers, friends, for those who are listening that are not sex workers. Don't touch the dancers, please. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's not comfortable. Yeah. I have, like, I have, like, a strategy, like, as soon as someone's, like, in distance of me, like, I put my hands in certain places, so, like, if they, like, bring it close, I just kind of, like, spoof. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, okay, and away. (laughs) I'm gonna swat you away. (laughs) Yeah. I'd be slapping people on the hand, too. And oh. I'll look at them in the eyes be like... No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> be like, yeah. So, because that happens so often. Like It is so often. If I, if I had to get mad at every single person, I'll be in a bad mood all night. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this one, this next question is, I guess, more of an opinion piece, but... Since Portland is so progressive, why don't we have venues for male strippers to entertain female clients or at least shows that employ male entertainers? And we kind of touched on this earlier, but anything else you want to add, you can add. So, they said, why does 
doesn't Portland have venues for for straight women? I think it's for straight male strippers to entertain female clients. At least that's we what it. Oh, there you go, listener, based in <laughs> Portland. <laughs> we, we, we do have it. Um, and I mean, I'm. I don't want to mention any club specifically mm-hmm. on here, but if that person messages me on Instagram, I could tell them where. Yeah, there we go. We can definitely do that. <laughs> I'll but, be sure to yeah plug everything at the end of the show for but sure. Either, either way, like um. Like I said, a lot of the... I mean, I've also danced at a lot of different clubs. I've danced events where there was all gender dancers. Mm-hmm. So I've danced, like, performed with people of every gender as well. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is really cool. I do really enjoy that. But I don't know. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. No, that's okay. You're good. You're good. (laughs) And I guess we already kind of pre-screened these questions, but I think this will be a a rather short one. But do you have an official list to refer on? Wait, hang on. Do you have an official list to refer to on how many places will hire male strippers or entertainers? I think this person wants to work as a male stripper or entertainer (laughs) is my vibe. But... Okay, I, I know exactly who this is. Yes. That's cool. <laughs> okay. Um, there is, I don't have, like, I didn't write this. I mean, I have written a list before, but it's not, like, an official document either, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so the places that I have in mind, the cities that I have in mind to dance are... In Florida, mm-hmm. um, specifically in South Florida, was it Atlanta, New oh. Orleans, Texas, Denver, California, mm-hmm. Nevada, and oh, Oregon and Mexico. I think those are the places that I have. Lots of options. Lots of options there. Yeah. But those are the places that I'm picking out with nice venues. Right. Because I also prefer to go to a place that has a pole, Mm -hmm. that has, like, that I could be able to make money while I'm there. Like, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of things. Those are just places that have clubs that, are suitable for male dancers to to travel dance because you have other expenses and stuff. So, right, good point. Good point to make. Absolutely. So, there you have it. We have all the questions there that came in. Lots of curious minds here. But Miami, before I let you go, where can we find you? You can follow me on Instagram, Miami Lux underscore and yeah i usually update where i'll be performing Mm -hmm. um and post a whole bunch of other stuff i rant on there all the time (laughs) (laughs) yeah check me out on there definitely yes be sure to give miami follow and if you have any questions you could reach out to them uh, on their account and or if you're too shy you could ask me and I can connect <laughs> both of you but don't forget to like rate share review and subscribe it is strip by Sia on Instagram it's also strip by Sia on Twitter I'm also pretty active there and my personal Instagram is Sia Steph and it is brand new episodes every single Sunday for as long as I can do this podcast so And right now it's going to be two years strong. So keep on listening. Tell your friends. And we hope to see everyone in for another episode next Sunday. Thank you so much, Miami. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're listening to Strip by Sia. Hosted, produced, and edited by Steph Sia. 
artwork by Maria Bellinzarama, music by Ted D, and photography by Ian Dabern. Ha, ha, ha.